Let's get some practice with the epsilon delta definition of continuity by proving that a simple function is continuous on its entire domain. We're considering the identity function, f of x equals x, on any non-empty domain that's a subset of the real numbers. The identity function then, of course, takes an element from that domain d and sends it to itself in the real numbers. We want to prove that f is continuous. By continuous, we mean continuous on its entire domain. Remember, our epsilon delta definition of continuity is local. It's about continuity at a single point. So to prove that a function is continuous on its entire domain, what we'll generally do is just take an arbitrary point from the domain and show that the function is continuous at that point. Of course, here is our definition for reference if you want to take a look at it. Let's get into this straightforward proof. Just like with our familiar convergent sequence proofs, we begin by taking an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. We'll also take an arbitrary element c from the domain of our function. Then we need to guarantee that we'll be able to find some positive delta value that is going to make the rest of the proof work. We don't know what that is yet, so let's leave that for a moment and continue going over what our proof will look like, roughly speaking. After we set our delta value, we'll say then for all elements x of the domain that are within delta of the chosen point c, we have that the distance between f of x and f of c is less than epsilon. That's what we want to show. In order to figure out what delta value is going to work for our proof, let's work with this expression a little bit, the absolute value of f of x minus f of c, and see how we can control it with delta. This is just like with a lot of our convergent sequence proofs, where we do scratch work by working with the absolute value of a n minus the limit a. In this case, things are going to work out very nicely. By definition of our function, that it's the identity function, the absolute value of f of x minus f of c is equal to the absolute value of x minus c, because f of x equals x and f of c equals c. But then this is perfect because the absolute value of x minus c has to be less than delta, and we can make delta whatever positive real number we want. So let's set delta equal to epsilon, and that will make this proof work. We'll say let delta equal epsilon. Then for any element x from our domain that is within delta of c, we have that f of x is within epsilon of f of c. Thus, the function f is continuous at c. And since c was an arbitrary point from our domain d, which was just an arbitrary non-empty subset of the real numbers, we've proven that the identity function is continuous on every non-empty subset from the real numbers. Technically, it's also continuous with the empty set as a domain, but of course, that's kind of weird. So I wanted to just keep our focus on non-empty sets for this proof and take a moment to appreciate the weirdness of what we've just proven. We're really comfortable, generally speaking, with the idea of f of x equals x being continuous. I mean, all our lives we've been plotting this function and it looks something like that. But we've just proven that it is continuous on any non-empty subset of the real numbers. So our domain might be discrete and then our function wouldn't look like that. So we've just proven that a function that could look like this, for example, just these points I'm plotting, is continuous. This is continuous and this is continuous. That's pretty weird. Once we get this formal definition of continuity, it confirms a lot of what we would expect to be true, but it also surprises us sometimes. And if you thought this proof was a little bit boring, you'll be happy to know that they don't get any easier from here.